was terrific. So now we're going to enter the third part of the um, agenda. And so this part, as you'll recall, is, uh, is titled Government as a Catalyst. What we want to explore here is the uh, government's role in putting health data to work, how they can bring health data to live, uh, alive for their people, um, the role that they actually play in enabling others to use health data, um, and perhaps how that is evolving as we go forward. Uh, we've got in this section a case study, a uh, panel discussion, and another case study. And the first case study uh, I'm going to introduce now. We're going to talk about government's role in using health data to advance our system with Dr. Wilma Wooten, who will present a case study from her experience in San Diego, California. Dr. Wooten is the Public Health Officer and Director of Public Health Services at the Health and Human Services Agency in the County of San Diego, where she has been since 2001. In her current role, she has oversight for almost 500 employees and a budget of approximately $100 million, serving, serving a county of 3.1 million residents. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Wilma Wooten. Can everyone hear me? Can everyone hear me? Yes. All right, then, great. Well, what I'm going to do, uh, share with you this afternoon, is the story of San Diego and how we are looking to monitor the health of our community to make our community a healthier place to live. Next slide. So before I get started in uh, talking about the San Diego Live Well initiative, I'd like to just frame San Diego for you to give you an idea of what type of population we're dealing with. San Diego has about, is about 4,200 uh, square miles, which is about the size of Connecticut. San Diego County is larger than 21 other uh, states in the United States. We're the fifth largest county in the, st in the U.S. and the second largest county in California. We have 18 incorporated uh, municipalities and 17 unincorporated municipalities, which our board of supervisors are responsible for. And our uh, population actually since the 2000 census increased by 10 percent. And the estimates for 2012 were at 3.2 million. Uh, individuals in our county, and this is, does not include tourists and other people coming in uh, from Mexico that might uh, choose to live in San Diego. You'll see here the demographics. Uh, we are now at 32 percent uh, Latinos, and uh, we are a very diverse region as well. We there are over 100 languages spoken in San Diego. We are the largest refugee resettlement site. We have a large military population, and we are the largest or busiest uh, U.S.-Mexico uh, border crossing. So there's a lot going on in San Diego. This is our Live Well San Diego initiative. It's composed of three components, um, health, safety, and thriving. Building better health is the health component. Living safely is the safety component. And we are uh, in developing, uh, currently developing the thriving component. The first two components have been developed Initially, this started out as a 10-year initiative in our agency, our Health and Human Services Agency, focused on quality, efficiency, and results, and continuous quality improvement. The whole focus is to deliver uh, smarter services, so that's where the continuous quality improvement uh, comes in. But delivering these services to everyone, not just those at risk or those high-need individuals. <coughs> It is also founded on uh, building a better informed community so that they have the opportunity to make positive choices. So what began as an agency vision, the last week we talked about vision and the will. The vision, the will ha that has to start, the dream or the idea has to start with the uh, vision. But you also, in order to implement the vision, you have to have the will, the political will, uh, on board. So what began in our agency spread to all of the other business groups in our county and then spread to all of the other sectors in San Diego from healthcare to community-based organizations, faith-based, all of the other sectors that contribute to the public health system in California. So this is the timeline of uh, 
the uh, initiation of the vision in 2008. And for the health component, it was approved by the Board of Supervisors in 2010. 2011 and uh, 12, we have the uh, year one and year two report. The safety component was approved by the Board of Supervisors in October 2012. And then just last month, we issued our year three report, including both components. And then in 2014 is when the thriving piece will, uh, will be uh, launched. At the year three report, we also recognize 11 community partners. That is very important because government cannot do anything on its own. We really must involve and include uh, our community stakeholders to help initiate and to help uh, implement the vision that we uh, developed. So this is a list of the 11 community partners that were uh, honored or recognized in our uh, year three evaluations. The common community partner number one, we first have to have a historical history, a history of uh, being involved with the uh, agency to uh, promote positive and healthy choices, and also be willing to um, develop or implement projects related to healthy eating, healthy living like physical activity, and uh, uh, smoking cessation. And we'll talk about the 3450 in just a minute, but that will give you uh, a basis to understand the types of activities. So just to give you an example of some of the activities, uh, the uh, Chula Vista Elementary School District recognized that there was a high uh, incidence of obesity. They implemented a uh, school wellness plan, looking at the types of foods that were served, uh, types of foods that were served during activities or celebrations like cupcakes, or uh, they removed uh, chocolate flavored uh, milk from the, uh, the menu. And they also sent information home to the families so that these uh, ideas and strategies could be implemented at home as well. They actually, in just two years, saw a 3.2% reduction in obesity for the 25,000 students uh, in their elementary school district. So, and that was without any money. This is the will and the vision of a superintendent. And as a result of that, they also have been a contractor in one of our federal um, uh, grants, the Community Putting Prevention to Work grant. So they had a history with us, and they were committed to the vision that uh, we had laid out as well. And they are continuing to measure the height and weight to identify the uh, BMI of their students every year so that they can monitor the health of the students. So this is uh, the foundation for the building better health component. There are three behaviors, um, poor nutrition, physical inactivity, and smoking that contributes to four chronic diseases, cancer, heart disease, and stroke, diabetes, and asthma uh, as a respiratory condition that leads to over 50% of deaths. This is worldwide, not just in San Diego. So we identified what that uh, percentage was for each of the regions in our county, and it created competition among our Board of Supervisors. Immediately after the first, um, the Building Better Health component was approved by our Board of Supervisors in October, the regions began to engage their community stakeholders to develop their plans for improving the health of their community. And we actually use all of that information to support our application for public health accreditation. I'm not sure many of you are aware of what that is, but it really is looking at developing a standardization and uh, key components based on the 10 essential services of public health that all public health departments can hold up and say, I meet these qualification standards and measures. And, and we actually, I just want to share with you a two minute uh, video that Sarah will help me to launch. Meet Alex. He's a seventh grader in San Diego County who lives with his mom, sister, grandfather, one dog, dog, and two cats. 
One day, Alex will be an architect, marine biologist, teacher, farmer, father, mentor, obese. Like 30% of his peers, Alex is overweight. 80% of children who are overweight at this age are obese by 25. If only Alex could bike to school. Sorry. As there are just let us say uh, yeah. Meet Alex. He's a seventh grader in San Diego County who lives with his mom, sister, grandfather, one dog, and two cats. One day Alex will be an architect, marine biologist, teacher, farmer, father, mentor, obese. Like 30% of his peers, Alex is overweight. 80% of children who are overweight at this age are obese by 25. If only Alex could bike to school. If only bike paths in his neighborhood were safe and close by, Alex might get more exercise, and he might not develop diabetes. Meet Alex's mom, Bernice. Bernice works for the county of San Diego. She is single, smart, a superwoman, a volunteer, a mom, taking care of two young children and an aging father. She cooks what is cheap, quick, easy. If only she knew how small changes can make a big difference in her family's health. On average, Americans consume 200 to 300 more calories each day than we did 30 years ago. Nearly half of these extra calories come from sugar sweetened drinks. If only Bernice could buy fresh fruits and vegetables at her corner store or a farmer's market. Meet Alex's grandfather, Charlie. He bought two wars, but the impression is one demon he cannot conquer, not in his own. His grandchildren bring joy and purpose, but lately he's been withdrawn, isolated, lethargic. If only Charlie did not see his depression as a character flaw. If only Charlie had a medical where his primary care doctor and a mental health specialist coordinated his care. Alex, Bernice, Charlie, you, healthy ever after. Only if we work together will these things happen. Only if we are bold enough to improve services, change our choices, change our policies, change our culture within. the video that was shown at our Board of Supervisors meeting in uh, July 2010 with the approval of the Building Better Health component. The, uh, the slide 11, that is uh, the, okay, so Living Safely is the second component of Live Well San Diego. This was approved by the Board of Supervisors in September uh, or October 2012. It is uh, focused, the foundation of this component is focused on residents that are protected from crime and abuse, neighborhoods that are safe to live, that are safe for where individuals play and where they uh, work, and well as having a resilient community in the face of disasters or emergencies. Uh, and there are many activities that are going on to address these outcomes. The third component, as I stated, is the thriving component which is basically creating or promoting a region that has high quality of care for its residents. So all of these three components, uh, the strategies to implement them are founded on the building a better services delivery system, uh, creating healthier choices, uh, choosing um, or pursuing policy and environmental changes, as well as systems changes that make the easy choice, the healthy choice, the easy choice, and then changing the culture from within. And that speaks to uh, employee wellness, whether it's at the county government or in other organizations, because if, as the county, if we're telling the community you should do X, Y, and Z, we should be providing those same services for our employees as well. This is just now a summary. You should have this handout. 
um, that was uh, available at the back table, this pyramid. If you don't have it, you can get it from the back. It basically outlines the Live Well San Diego initiative, uh, starting with one vision of a, for a healthy, safe, and thriving San Diego that is achieved across three uh, components, building better health, living safely, and thriving. These were rolled out, are being rolled out over time, and I've shown you the timeline for those. There are four strategies to achieve each of these components. We just described that. But it's, it takes more than just implementing a program. You have to have measurements to determine, are we successful? Are we where we want to be? And we have identified five areas of influence that will help us do that. And these five areas of influence have 10 key leading indicators that helps us to measure our progress in achieving the vision of Live Well San Diego to have safe, a healthy, safe, and thriving uh, communities. So the 10 indicators help to capture issues or, uh, or uh, measurements across all of the spectrums of our residents, whether it's uh, information uh, related to race and ethnicity, the geographic regions that they live in, their age or their gender. And we, it is our intent that these initiatives or these indicators will drive us towards research and best practices or evidence-based uh, practices to have the greatest impact and the greatest return on investment uh, for the efforts that we are uh, putting into this initiative. And it will also direct collective efforts across and among all of the stakeholders that are involved with this effort. The guiding principles that we use to select these 10 indicators, we wanted to keep it simple. We didn't want to have 600 indicators and people would not know really, really which ones were really important or difficult to uh, follow or track. So we, the tip of the iceberg uh, is the tip uh, rather than 10 indicators. Under each indicator, there are numerous indicators, um, programmatic level, that help feed into the top level indicators. And we'll show you uh, how that works in just a minute. As I said before, the indicators can be sliced and diced uh, by the various lenses, even disability and uh, nativity, which means the um, country of origin you want to look at certain uh, factors. And then uh, we want to make sure that the indicators can be compared not only within our regions, but also compared to the state, compared to nation nationwide efforts. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this slide, but these were the uh, a lot of the information that we use. These are best practices some uh, that we use to help identify the five areas of influence. We started with uh, the uh, Blue Zone, the American Human Development Index, and we also use the uh, Gallup uh, Five Principles of Well-Being. That helped to guide and uh, help us to develop the five um, influencing areas. We originally call them the five domains. Each domain uh, has uh, specific indicators, and we started with, because we wanted to be able to drill down to our community from the national down to the lowest level in San Diego. We started with uh, the data set directory of social determinants of health at the local level. We looked at uh, uh, other nationwide uh, rankings and also data sources. We definitely want to make sure that whatever we developed aligned with healthy people objectives. And we looked at our statewide data, uh, the California Health and Interview Survey, which collects data. And we want to make sure that the indicators we were choosing aligned with our county's strategic plan. So these are the five areas of influence here, health, knowledge, standard of living, community, and social, the definitions, and the top indicators here. You also have a handout here that uh, explains each of the uh, uh, 10 indicators. And on the back side, it gives you the current status or of these indicators. Where are we now? This was our initial rollout, and then we will periodically come back to our Board of Supervisors with status updates on uh, the uh, specific indicators. In the two minutes that I have left, I want to give you a framework. Oh, 
the uh, sectors. So there are actions that each sector can take. Everybody playing in their lane, doing what they do best. That's, those are the actions we want to take collectively. The results we want to see, uh, this is borrowed from a logic model, so what results do we want to see in the first three years, uh, short term, midterm, or intermediate, focus on risk behavior changes in the population, and then uh, long term, what outcomes do we want to see change? And all of these uh, parameters feed into those top uh, indicators. Here is an example of uh, putting our model into practice, looking at the Health and Human Services Agency, LUGE, which is our land use and environmental group, looking at other sectors, how all of these sectors can contribute to whether it's uh, improving uh, healthy eating conditions or increasing physical activity. All of these factors are collectively contributing to improving diet and exercise, decreasing obesity, and uh, decreasing the deaths due to the 3450 uh, principle that I showed with you, which all in turn increase life expectancy. So in the essence of time, I'm going to, you might think that this is uh, naive, but we already have evidence to show this is without the coordinated approach that we are achieving here. This is just through the efforts of our Childhood Obesity Initiative. The UCLA Center of Health Policy and Research compared 2005 and 2010 fit, uh, fitness gram data where California measures the uh, BMI of 5th, 7th, and ninth graders. And from 2005 to 10, there was a 3.7% reduction in San Diego, the largest reduction in Southern California. So it has been proven and done already. Just to share here, the website, you have that information on your handouts. On the website, you want to compare the data so we place this, this, the current status of our indicators and we will compare those uh, indicators at the state and the nationwide level and we can uh, show the, the data across supervisorial districts as well as our health and human services uh, districts area. So the last thing that we want to do is in, to help us enhance and monitor the collected impact is secure, identify and secure a performance management system so that we can dump in all of our strategic plans, our uh, all of the, the, the objectives that our programs have, our contractors have, so that we can monitor all of the activities that lead to the indicators that we've identified. And we can then track more effectively those short-term, mid-term, and long-term uh, outcomes. I think that concludes my uh, presentation. The overall effort for the collective impact so that we can all row efficiently in the same direction and get the outcomes that we want to achieve. Thank you. That was fantastic. Thank you. You know, when we talk about putting health data to work, I think what this helps bring to life is that the life is actually putting it to work.